Hello, soon-to-be licensed nurse practitioners. This is Ms. Cohen, and I present to you the Nurse Practitioner Board's Review Pediatric Part 2. This is for my FNP test takers. If you haven't seen Part 1, I welcome you to do so. This is just additional information. It was a long lecture, so I bring to you Part 2. Now, my style of teaching is straight to the point. I give you the information that you need to know without the extra fluff. And let me show you what we're going to discuss in this presentation. Emergent diagnoses, because the boards want to make sure that you're able to recognize emergent situations versus non-emergent. Other diagnoses, common rashes, rashes are very common in kids, something that you need to learn. Um, and I also have a separate lecture on the viral exanthems that describes the rashes and how to recognize them from each other. Make sure you pay attention to that lecture. Tanner stages, legal issues, statistics, growth and development, PIJ and Freud, uh, safety education, and immunizations for 10 years and older. When we talk about emergent diagnoses, neuroblastoma is one of them. It is a cancer most commonly found on the adrenal medulla, common uh, under the age of five. Now, whenever we talk about cancer, you should be thinking uh, a mass that it's fixed is ten, not, not necessarily tender, actually. Most cancers are not painful. Uh, except when they start causing issues to the surrounding structures. But a fixed mass that is firm should raise a red flag for cancer. Irregular or the irregularity of this mass, just like with melanoma, irregular borders, should raise suspicion for cancer and frequently crosses the midline. Whenever you see something green, highlighted green in my presentation, this is something that you really need to know if you know what I mean. So um, the big one, about this one, neuroblastoma, is that it frequently crosses the midline. Remember, midline is here. The kidneys, you know where they're located. So if there's a mass crossing the midline, it should raise the flag for neuroblastoma. Pay attention to the key characteristics of all of these diagnoses, because if something presents in the kidney area that crosses the midline, the only thing you should be thinking about is neuroblastoma. Symptoms, just like with most cancers, would be weight loss and fatigue. In this case, Horner syndrome, periorbital ecchymosis, bone pain, and hypertension because you're dealing with the kidney area. And as you know, the kidneys play a key function in regulating the blood pressure. Findings would be elevated urinary uh, catecholamines, anemia. So with an abdominal ultrasound, you can rule this out. Now, Wilms tumor or nephroblastoma this is common malignancy, renal malignancy in the ages of two and three. The presentation again would be this mass in the flank area. It does not cross or rarely crosses the midline. That's the difference. It could be asymptomatic or no symptoms, or you could have abdominal pain, hypertension again, but see the difference between the two? Willem's tumor does not cross the midline. The other one does. Hematuria, smooth abdominal mass, most common in blacks and female, and again, an ultrasound will rule this out or diagnose it. Epiglottitis. Epiglottitis. Pay attention to the prefix and the suffix of words. It gives you a lot of information about what they're talking about. Itis is an inflammation, and epiglottitis is the epiglottis. So inflammation and swelling of the epiglottis caused by an infection or trauma, most common between the ages 2 and 6. The presentation will be rapid onset of fever, chills, toxicity. The key one is drooling, muffled, hot potato. Let me pause here and just tell you that nothing else that you will study will present with symptoms of muffled, hot potato boys. So if you see that, boom, epiglottitis we're talking about. Tripod sitting posture, tripod three, right? Because a kid will lean forward as they have issues breathing or swallowing. Hyperextended neck, again, because there's issues in the neck, obstruction, so they're hyperextending. Wide mouth, open breathing. They're having difficulty breathing. Strider, because there's an obstruction or something obstructing the airflow. Tachycardia, they become very restless if they can't breathe. And tachypnea, again, restlessness because they can't breathe. Symptoms will be severe sore throat, no appetite, and definitely anxiety because they can't breathe or swallow. Causes, most common is the hemophilias influenza. That's why now we have the Hib vaccine that takes care of this or prevents it. Osteo. Myelitis, again, osteo meaning bone, itis meaning inflammation. This is inflammation or swelling of the bone, most common in infants and children. So presentation, just like any itis, would be, uh, in this case, osteo, bone that is red, 
swollen, warm to touch, may have a limp or avoidance of using the extremity because the bone is hurting. Symptoms will be fever and irritability. I would be upset if I can't walk. And then the growth plate infection can cause growth stunting for obvious reasons. So um, refer them out. Refer them out to the emergency room so it can be properly evaluated. High dose antibiotics if there's an infection going on. Now, oh, let me move my head up here. Orbital cellulitis. Emergency, right? They can lose their vision. It's infection of the soft tissue of the eye socket. So presentation could be abrupt onset of eye pain. It's worse with movement of the eye. So if when you're assessing and you ask, please move the eyes side to side, it's going to cause discomfort. Fever, chills, proptosis or exophthalmus, the eyes bulging out or the of the affected eye could be one or both. Now, if you do ask to move the eyes and it causes pain, this clearly would raise suspicion for this diagnosis. Most common because of sinusitis, sinusitis, think of it, ear, nose, and throat in the eyes, it's all connected, it's all in the same channels. So if an infection it happens in the nose, it can travel to the eyes, um, but you need to get them into the emergency room for proper evaluation because it can progress into vision loss. So CT or MRI, but let the emergency room take care of this. <clears throat> Child abuse. I, I'm just going to go through this slide very fast because it makes me very uncomfortable. So predators, 82% um, will be parents, 6% will be other relatives. Um, if there's child abuse and they're hitting them, they may have healed, scald fractures, rib fractures, green stick fractures, bruises on the trunk area. Makes sense. All right. But the parent will always or the predator will always have an excuse. Oh, I didn't seek medical attention because and it just the injuries don't make sense with the story and it just becomes very gray. Um, higher risk in developmentally ill children, physically disabled children for obvious reasons. The parents lose their patience. And what you need to know is that it's reportable. You report this. Emergent diagnoses, Kawasaki. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was just a little small preview of the live classes that I hold. But if you like this style of teaching or learning and you want the rest of the presentation, then I welcome you to come into the cohenreview.teachable.com where you can access the remaining of this video. And also I offer the printable PowerPoint presentation so you can study along. Now I have part A, part B and part C. And it really doesn't matter which test you're going for. You could be taking the AANP or the ANCC. You could be going for family practice, adult gero, or even the acute care. All of those tests are covered in my review. And my content is very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to condense all the material before you're gonna take the test to make sure that you're ready. In addition to the live courses, I have probably the most inexpensive um, entire review course called the Cohen Review, where I go over each system. So again, I welcome you to come and access the content. I have some free videos on my website which will be very, very, very beneficial for your studies. If you have any questions along the way, please shoot me an email at thecohenreview at gmail.com. And if you're not following me on social media, such as Instagram or Facebook, I welcome you to do so. Not because of I want to become popular or have more followers. It's just because I'm constantly loading tips and little study materials and things that I may not have in my reviews that are just updated content that you must be prepared for to see on the test. So again, welcome to the Cohen Review. Come see my stuff. And thank you guys for trusting my work in advance. And I wish you the best of luck with your studies. And don't forget to let me know when you pass because I want to make sure I congratulate you.